Job. All right, you may be asking the obvious question, why did I make two Texas is? Well, it's simple. I want to be able to decorate one however I want, and then I want that look where I can then transfer on the other one and then transfer one at a time. If I had to only have one piece, decorate it, remove it, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to get it back in the exact place I want. So that's essentially why I've got one that's going to be my finished piece and one that is my working piece where I can take a cap and move it over one by one so I have the perfect image that I want. This bottle cap project is actually a project I've been wanting to do for a long time. Believe it or not, this is actually years worth of collecting bottle caps. Um, so no, don't worry about me. This isn't something that I did over a month period. Although I was dedicated, I do like my shiner. But no, it was just something that it's just been in the works for a long time. And I finally felt like, all right, that's right, I've got enough bottle caps. Let's make it happen.
be down. I'm gonna get that off. Uh. Ow! No problem. It wasn't so bad. All right, well, that's one. Why does it come out so fast? All right, that's two. <sighs> Here we go. Three hours later. No. Five hours later. All right, last one. Hill Country Peach Wheat. That's a good one. All right. All right, now it is time for the next step. Well, I'm officially in the um, fart around and find out moment. <laughs> Read the directions. It's a one-to-one. -one. Should be fairly easy. I, I think I have it sealed. I duct taped the bottom as well. I have the heat gun at the ready for bubbles and now I just need to get up the guts to do it. So here we go. This was a Beast Bond epoxy resin kit that I just found off of Amazon. It was a self-leveling and ultra glossy um, epoxy that it was a one-to-one -one pour, meaning it was one part hardener to one part resin. And so then I just poured in small batches. This pour took me four total batches to mix up. And each batch took about four to six minutes where I basically just stirred nice and slow uh, until it wasn't cloudy anymore, trying to not get any bubbles. Once that was done, I just gave it a nice slow pour onto the actual uh, piece of art itself and then just had the heat gun at the ready. And really, it was a fairly simple, straightforward process. And I really, really was excited about the results.
the next day. Okay. Well, it's not been quite 24 hours yet, so this is not finished curing, but... Oh, it's heavy. Ah? Uh, huh? <laughs> Let's talk about things I didn't have. One, I didn't have a large container to do the mixing, so I had to do it in small batches. Uh, two, I did not have an acetylene torch. I just had the heat gun, which this bad boy was key. And three, honestly, didn't really have a clue. Let's be real. If you've never done epoxy before, it's kind of daunting because epoxy is not cheap. But this turned out great. Honestly, the biggest issue I had was the air pockets underneath the, uh, the bottle caps. A few of those I did not hot glue well enough, and so they'd start to float to the surface. So I would literally just take a nail and I would pop it down real quick, and it would shoot the air bubble out from underneath the bottle cap, and it would set it into place. And then I'd just take the heat gun, do 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 do, get rid of the air bubbles, I basically had to babysit this bad boy for probably 30 minutes, maybe an hour, uh, and use the heat gun to help cure it faster. But other than that, it went really, really well. I did do duct tape just as an additional piece. I'm not sure if it was needed or not, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have any epoxy coming through. So yeah, I'm gonna finish letting this cure for to get me at least to the 24 hour mark and then I will pop all these bad boys away and uh, see what we get. Wow, it's really cool. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. One of the really cool parts of using this specific epoxy was that it gave it a glass finish right off the pour. So I did take the entire sides after I cut this out and sanded it down to about a 1200 grit, but I just felt it really wasn't necessary on the top because it was crystal clear. Um, if I were going to, I would definitely sand it up to a 2000 and then follow it up with a nice uh, buffing compound to give it a good finish clean look. Okay, so here we go. We got another project in the books and I am over the moon with this one. You know when you like think of a project in your head and you wanna do something and it never turns out quite as you wanted? Well, this was one of those few times where this turned out exactly as I had pictured it. I really didn't have any surprises throughout the entire process and I learned a lot of things with how to use the epoxy as far as pour times, uh, methods to making sure I had no bubbles, uh, and it's just gonna help me in my next epoxy project. So it really wasn't that hard. So if you are into looking to try some epoxy projects yourself, this is the kind of thing I would recommend you start with because you know, there's not a lot of money put into it. If you screw it up, it's not a huge loss. And it gives you that confidence you need for when the next thing that comes around, maybe you can do a desk or, or something, a bigger piece of furniture. But 
This was perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. And now it's just a really cool piece of wall art that I can stare at every time I'm out here working on the lathe. So either or, really fun. Had a good time with this one and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you maybe learned a few things or two and I will see you on the next one.